In this video, we're going to be adding a deck to our game that's going to have random cards in it. To start, let's choose a file for the image for the back of our deck. In this example, I'm just using the same template PNG file that's available for download on our site. The file uploads right away, and now we have our poker deck created. We can give that deck a name. We'll call it random deck. We can choose the quantity of these decks to be included in the game. And then it says deck includes, and it can either be all cards or random cards. So in this case, we want it to be random cards inside the deck. Choose that and you'll see the screen changes quite a bit. So now we can see the random card classes. Think of classes as categories. And while there are some default names, such as common, uncommon, that sort of thing, you can actually choose the name for the class you want. So this could be anything. I'm going to name this one Super Rare. In the quantity field next to it, you're going to enter how many of those cards you want the deck to use. And this is basically when the deck is being generated. So I'm going to use the number two. Now the important thing is, is that you need to have a number that's larger than the quantity because it's only going to be pulling some of the cards randomly from the however many are available. So if there's four super rares available in the deck, it's going to pull two of those out and include those in the deck. So the same thing with uncommon. If we wanted to set a quantity of five uncommon cards, then maybe that we would actually upload 10 uncommon cards. And then each time the deck is created, five of them would go into the deck. So hopefully that makes sense. Now the same uh, steps apply in terms of the uh, proofing process. So we need to proof this image. We can tell that because there's an orange box right here that tells us that it hasn't been proofed. So we're gonna move down to the proof button. Now we can see the image. If everything looks good, we can hit the green approve button. If we need to make a change, click on the red deny button. And you can toggle the different options for cut lines and also the color filter. Everything looks good, so I'm going to approve it. Okay, so now we've created the beginning of our deck and we can continue on by editing the cards inside of the deck and adding additional faces. So let's do that. Click the green edit cards button, then click on the green file load upload button, or you can drag and drop files here. And just select various cards that you wish to upload. They will come up automatically here. And now we can see them all. Then we can update the names of them. And then there's a class name field. And this is where we specify which category each card is in. So this is currently in super rare, so I'll leave it there. And then underneath that, there's a back from field. And this asks you whether or not you wish to use the back image from the deck which we previously uploaded, or if the card should have a unique front and back. You can see now there is a, two different thumbnails for a face and a back. But for this example, I'm not gonna get into that. So let's set that back to deck. So it's gonna use this face and it's gonna use the back from the deck. We can look over at this card and we can say, all right, this is gonna be card two and we're gonna move this to a different class. And we're gonna say this is a, uh, an uncommon card. And then we could set the back from to either deck or card again. And the last thing we would need to do in this example is to proof the different images. You can see all of these have the orange information box that says they're not proofed. So let's go ahead and proof this. Everything looks good. So I'm gonna click the green approve button and when I do that, you'll notice that it takes me to the next image that needs to be approved. Now it looks the same because I'm using the same template here just in this example. 
But if it was a different image, like it is in your case, you're gonna see different images load each time. Each time I approve, it goes to the next image that needs to be approved. And this is, this is designed as a time-saving mechanism for you as the designer. So I'm gonna cl keep clicking approve, and finally, I'm done with that. And you can see all of the cards now do not have the orange information box next to them. And everything has been proofed. We've also set our classes. So now when our deck is created, these cards uh, will belong to the correct classes and uh, you will have a random deck.